Windows Phone 8 dog fight this time. How's it going, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and I've got the Nokia Lumia 920 and the HTC Windows Phone 8X pitting them head to head in a dog fight battle. Which one will win? You gotta watch and find out, friends. But first, special thanks to our partners at Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices like this for use in our One Paw Bandit giveaway game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile to get either of these devices, you walk out working, they help you set up your email, your web, your contacts, and more. So when you walk out the door, you're good to go. Lumia 920. 8X, it's a dogfight battle, and it starts right now. Part two of a dogfight between two awesome Windows Phone 8 devices, both of which are on AT&T, but the latter of which is on T-Mobile and Verizon as well. So you've got different variants of the Lumia available on different carriers. T-Mobile has the Lumia 810, Verizon has the Lumia 822, but AT&T's got the flagship, the Mac Daddy, the Lumia 920, and the 8X is available on those three. They're both packed in killer specifications, dual core, 1.5 gigahertz processors, 4.5 inch HD display, 4.3 inch HD display, lots of different choices here to choose from, and depending on your preference, and depending on how much you prioritize size, versus features, versus camera settings, versus awesomeness, versus even more awesomeness, versus coolness, you get where I'm going with this, it's a challenge, particularly given the fact that the software, for the most part, is exactly the same on both of these devices, but two awesome Windows Phone devices for the holiday season. Let's jump into part two and talk about what makes these devices different from each other. First of all, the Nokia Lumia 920, built-in applications. It's available for $99.99 at AT&T, and it brings in some great stuff like Nokia City Lens, Nokia Drive, Maps, and Music. Music just so happens to be one of my favorites. We'll take a look at Lumia 920 and start it up over here on the blue one. I actually have not worked with the blue one that long. If you remember back to the review, I had the white one, so all my good stuff was on that one. But I can create a mixed radio station, for example, and let's do this, continue, and we'll set our own. We'll create one. So let's create a mix, and let's bring in some artists together here, and we'll do... Uh, Luke, Brian, my usual. Luke, Brian, let's see what comes up. And let's bring over somebody else. You know what, Taylor Swift. Bring over Taylor Swift. That's cray cray, as the kids say, cray cray. Taylor Swift, we are never, ever, ever getting back together, friends. And then uh, let's think what else. Um, slipping one, yeah, how about Easton Corbin? And then we'll bring that one over. Also, so I can play the mix, bring over some country stations as well. So I can create my own mix, I can set it for offline status. This is a great value proposition. And you can see I can listen to it in the background and then when I hit the volume rocker buttons, I can choose to pause it or fast forward to the next track. So that's a nice option, comes free out of the box. You can create unlimited mixes, which I really like, and, uh, and change it around as you see fit. And then of course there are paid options uh, as well. So really a well done application. Again, keeping in mind this device, it's $99.99, this is a free application. It's really impressive all around. And of course, like I said, you can buy stuff through the store if you want to take advantage of the full robustness of the application. City Lens is another one of my favorites here. And you'll see, we'll start this up. And I can explore Dallas, for example. So nearby food hotel. So let's just say, you know what, I'm hungry for lunch. It's 11.54 right now. I'm gonna look and see what food is nearby. I'm gonna calibrate my compass. And you can see right here that I've got some different choices around me. Nick and Willie's, Dairy Queen, Egg Roll Express. I've got a bunch of, uh, of various restaurants over here. Dickie's Barbecue Pit, Starbucks, August Moon, Sushi, and more. So all I have to do is move the device around like this. And it's basically locating things based on where I'm located. And then, of course, showing it in real time. So I can switch, uh, flip it over into portrait mode. And I can see where they are according to the compass. And I can see, you know what, McDonald's is kind of southwest. And I did not mean to load up maps. There we go, Pizza Hut, Southwest to an extent, at least from where I'm pointing right now. Dairy Queen, ice cream sounds good for lunch. Northeast, we'll take a look at that one too when I go to eat lunch in about an hour. Egg Roll Express, Einstein Brothers, Dickie's Barbecue, you get the idea, a lot of different choices to choose from. And you can do the same thing with hotels, with fun, with sites, but I love to put it in landscape mode and kind of move it around and see what's new in the area. I've used this actually a couple of times where I'm like, you know what? Don't know what I want to eat for lunch today. I'm just gonna use the city lens to explore around and see. Not in the mood for sushi, not in the mood for fast food, not in the mood for American. That's a great value application as well. Another one I'm really enjoying is Nokia Drive. Turn-by-turn -turn navigation. It's been in Windows Phone to an extent for a while. It's nice to see an application actually support it even more. So I can download that later. And we'll go to Nokia Drive. And I can set my destination. I have my favorites. And of course I can search as well. So let's say, you know what, Frisco. Let's go to Frisco. and we'll go to HCCA, we'll go to Hills of Kingswood. And so that's about 11.6 miles from Frisco, it takes me right up the tollway most likely. 
but you can see it loading up right now. Now, for whatever reason, uh, LTE is not running on this device, so not sure why it's doing that, but uh, it's stuck on HSPA Plus with the SIM card that was sent to me by, uh, by Nokia PR. So not quite sure why it's not connecting to LTE. Just get the idea here of what it looks like. I've got my start, my endpoint, and then I can move around and access and drive to, and then I can see the directions as well. So a lot of different options here. You know, this kind of goes in the face against Google Maps, even though Google Maps is definitely fleshed out, in my opinion, a lot better and more established. It's nice to see this over on Windows Phone, and it becomes less of a, you know what, I'm gonna go with Android because it's got Maps, I'm gonna go with Android because it's got this. They're really catching up in a lot of ways, thanks in part to great OEMs like Nokia that are trying to build the platform because it's essential to their survival. So a benefit for both all around. Nokia Maps are great because you can store them and download them offline and use them on your phone which is a really nice benefit. So you know what, you're traveling overseas, you're going on a trip to London, for example, you can download London Maps prior to leaving and have those offline and stored on your phone so you're not using a ton of data every single time you're connecting to Maps. So that's really nice. But important, you know, pinch to zoom, relatively responsive here. All around, let's take a look back over here, not at camera, but let's take a look at the browser. And we'll do a browser test over here, just kind of jumping between the devices. Data Sense, actually, before I do the browser test, is a really cool feature that's exclusive to Verizon wireless devices. It's on the Lumia 822, it's on the 8X as well. And you can see here, for example, I've used 92 megabytes of cellular and Wi-Fi. I've used zero megabytes because I'm not a fan of Wi-Fi on phones. It's a personal thing, but it's not my thing. Usage here as well, you can see app downloads took up the most of that. People as well, Internet Explorer a little bit, Outlook just a little bit. And I can set a limit as well. A monthly limit, let's say my data allotment is five gigabytes, and it resets every day, or every month rather, on the fifth. Well now, I can see I've got 4.9 gigabytes remaining, my limit will reset in five days. And this is a great application. Joe Belfiore uh, talked about this application at the launch event when he was like, you know what, my mom's constantly asking about data. And when you get into these tiered data allotments, it's really good to have this. And DataSense works to find the stuff you use the most and make it less data intensive. So really a cool application. Hate that it's only available on Verizon, but hey, kudos to those people that are on Verizon and use it on a regular basis. That's a good score for them. So obviously both devices are available uh, with wireless charging as well. This one just on the Verizon side, Lumia 920 is an AT&T exclusive so that doesn't really apply. But the Nokia wireless charger looks like this. You can get one for the 8X as well. It's based on the Qi standard, so actually this works on both and I've used both to charge successfully. But if it were plugged in, I could pop it down and automatically charge these. Now it's a benefit for two reasons. One, it's great to be able to do that and just set it down at the end of the day and not plug it in. The con is if you're somebody like me that's receiving a lot of emails throughout the night, you're constantly doing this throughout the day as you're getting emails or text messages or phone calls and it may take the battery a little bit longer to charge. Still, really a nice accessory here. Great to see wireless charging extending out across the board. Other HTC goodies, you get Photo Enhancer. You do get some value added applications over here, but they're not as robust as Nokia is. And arguably, they shouldn't be as robust because Nokia has really got more skin in the game when it comes to Windows Phone 8 success, given the fact that this is the only platform they're pursuing right now. So Nokia's got a ton of value added stuff over here. They've got a great price point. I'm a big fan of HTC's uh, Sense application as well. I'll come in here and check weather on a regular basis, and I like the lock screen a lot also. Let's take a look at uh, just kind of the overall design of these devices just to show you in comparison the difference between the two. You can see physical camera buttons, you've got Nokia's power button on the right side with a volume rocker. Over here just a volume rocker and you can see the micro SIM card slot right there which you have to have a tool to get to. Power button on top on the 8X along with the headphone jack. Headphone jack up here both of which are 3.5 millimeters. Micro SIM card slot up top. Nothing on either side of these units and then down at the bottom you've got your micro USB charging ports as well. So make no doubt about it, this one is much easier to hold in the hand. This one feels like an incredibly well-built smartphone and not that this one doesn't, but it has kind of meaty, meaty feel to it. It's a big device and you compare this to something like the One X for example, One X Plus rather, you compare this to the Galaxy Note 2, let me pull it off my desk over here, and you can really see it's a big device even though it's got a bigger display, it's still a meaty, kind of chunky device. You may love that, you may love the color differences. Where they're really winning here is they offer it in five different colors. Over here, really a thin device, but you're paying $100 extra on Verizon for this thinness. So you gotta decide, is the thinness worth it to you? Is it worth sacrificing 16 gigabytes? This has 32, this has 16 at 199 and at 99. So is it worth sacrificing and really going up in cost? It may be or it may not be. It depends on whether you value style over features or features are more important to you and you're okay with a chunkier device. So keep that in mind. People Hub, I wanna cover this stuff really quickly. People Hub, you can see here, I've got 474 new items. I really like this one. It's a Me Hub where I can share my Twitter stuff, my Facebook stuff, I can see my notifications, and I can post an update and have it easily post to Twitter, and I can do that over here, obviously, uh, as well. So, really nice benefits 
with Windows Phone 8. It's intended to be an all-encompassing operating system, and you've got these group chats as well. we'll take a look at people. I can go into family room. I can go into different groups and create a group, let's say, of phone dog staff. And if we all use Windows Phone 8 devices, we could create a shared calendar. We could message back and forth within the group. And then some of those features are available on Android and iOS as well. For example, some of the calendar appointments you can set on both devices, uh, or both this and Windows Phone and iOS and Android. Same thing over here, that's the same feature as a Windows Phone 8 feature. Another one I really like a lot is Family Room, which I set it up on this one. I'll have to do swipe to the side, and I can access, or excuse me, Kids Corner, and I can let my kid play. Now, I actually did not set a password, but I can set a password to where, to get into the main part of the phone, you need a password, but then over here, I can access Kids Corner, and it gives me something for my kids to play with. So I can create whichever applications I want to go in this, kind of make it their own. If I have a bunch of games on the phone, and they can customize it and kind of have fun with it. So we can name it little Timmy's Corner. Timmy. Timmy's Corner. And you can do this on the 8X as well. Timmy's Corner. This is a Windows Phone 8 thing. Corner. Can't spell and talk. Choose a picture. I can change the accent color just like I can in regular Windows Phone 8. Let's say little Timmy likes purple or mauve. And you can see it customizes it to his liking. When I'm done, just press the off button, press it back on, and I can access my area. Now, again, I can password lock that if I want to to prevent my kid from accessing that and to prevent them from using the phone or using email and sending a bunch of crazy stuff that they shouldn't be sending. So great features on Windows Phone 8, really impressed all around. 4G LTE on both of these devices, on Verizon, on AT&T, HSPA Plus on T-Mobile, LTE on AT&T over here. It's a tough call. A winner has to be declared in the dogfight. The winner of the dogfight it's just based on features, is the Lumia 920. They has a great camera, eight megapixels on both of these devices, and I do wanna show that off before we conclude the dogfight, just to show you some of the differences here. First of all, you get some interesting lenses. You get Bing Vision, and there are more lenses available, such as Panorama, that you can download from the store, from Microsoft Store, so keep that in mind. But still, Nokia logo, for example, HTC, really thin here, and the picture quality is not bad at all. Let's get this over here. But still, much better camera, including low-lit portraits over on the Lumia 920. They've really gone all out on the camera. It's really impressive. Much more impressive than Lumia 900, which wasn't impressive, even though they said it was. Uh, it wasn't as impressive. Really nice camera over here. So if you're looking for a great camera, you're looking for a ton of storage, 32 gigabytes, comparatively speaking, dual-core processor, bigger HD display, go with this device. If style's more important to you, and this is where it's hard for me, because from a style perspective, I love this device a lot. It really fits well in the hand. HTC has crafted an incredible device here in the 8X. It feels good. It's got a nice minimalistic feel to it and look to it. That said, I have to give the dogfight winner to this one because the features are that much greater and the price point's cheaper. It's 100 bucks as opposed to 200 for 16 gigabytes on Verizon, on AT&T, and on T-Mobile. Keep it locked on PhoneDog.com for continuing coverage. Hit me up on Twitter, PhoneDog underscore Aaron. Let me know which one you like more. Always love to hear from you. PhoneDog underscore Aaron. Facebook, Facebook.com slash PhoneDogAB. More dog fights to come. Bunch of Windows Phone 8 devices. We're going to pit it up against Android, iOS, and more as the holiday season progresses. And we're going to try to help you make a great buying decision this holiday season. Stay tuned for more on PhoneDog.com. And as always, we'll see you next time.